to you all about our summer recreation enrichment and tiger club programs for this summer. Next slide. Um, so my name is Kayla Marriott and for those of you who don't know me and who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, um, I am the community ed coordinator and I started last August so I'm coming up on a year in Princeton. Um, next slide. And the programs that I oversee in community ed are our recreation, enrichment, and tiger club programs. Um, we also have our uh, ECFE and preschool programs, which uh, Stephanie Mindorf oversees. Next slide. Um, so before I jump into each of the different programs, I wanted to give you a few data points because we all love data and seeing the growth of programs. So this first slide um, shows you the number of course sections offered. Um, so I broke it down by four different uh, areas, recreation, aquatics, enrichment, and driver's ed. Of course, aquatics goes into enrichment and driver's, or um, aquatics goes into recreation and driver's ed goes into enrichment. Um, but because there are different budget lines and things like that, it's nice to also see the growth of uh, aquatics and driver's ed specifically as well. So you can see uh, from last summer to this summer alone, we've grown um, especially in our enrichment area, which is really exciting for me. The first thing, um, or one of the first questions that I uh, asked was, where is all of our enrichment programs? Where's our STEM? We had some robotics and things like that in the fall um, and school year, but not a lot going on in the summer. So that was one area of focus that I really wanted to grow um, and be able to offer more this summer. Next slide. Um, and so another bar graph, uh, same areas, is this time uh, for a total number of registrations as of last week, So because of course we're still in summer programming and we have a couple more weeks to go, but as of last week, these are our growth um, from last summer to this summer. So our recreation program growing almost 400 enrollments, um, but also all of the other areas of aquatics, enrichment, drivers, and everything's growing, um, which is really exciting and heartening to see. Um, Meaning that's my first year here. Next slide, please. Just a quick question. Oh, yeah. The board's aware that uh, we we went out and we did a, a paper booklet or manual this spring that, that I don't know that we had done for a year or two. Did you guys think that was well received by the yes. public? Yes. Yep. So a lot of people really enjoyed our catalog production. We uh, did the printed version. Um, and one thing that we did was go out to different businesses and offer um, them a stack of catalogs because one day we ended up with about 500 extra catalogs and we said where why do we have so many extras and they were delivered properly to some of the areas so we just decided to go out and really help push um, some of those programs which people really enjoyed because then as you're walking into a grocery store or wherever then you can say hey look that's a catalog i didn't know that and um, it really just helps grow that community and school connection okay. um, so diving into the programs the first one our recreation programs, these are the same bar graphs as before, just condensed, um, so you can uh, easily see for the recreation programs. Um, a few new additions this summer were our uh, cheer camps, bike football camps, pickleball lessons, which were for adults as well, but we had some youth enrollments for that, so I wanted to highlight that. Um, and then a track and field day camp, which I'm actually running this Friday, um, because we don't have Tiger Club. So I wanted to be able to offer a few different opportunities for kids and families who have to work that day. Next slide. Um, so I won't go through the whole list, but this is um, what we have offered for different areas of recreation. You've got your sports and you've got your uh, fitness and your solo things as well. So it's really exciting. Um, we have a pretty well-rounded program. We have had a few uh, requests for lacrosse and some other sports, but it's a matter of finding instructors. So that's always our hardest challenge here. But overall, we have a pretty well-rounded recreation program. Next slide. Um, one fun thing is we also um, are always offer feedback evaluation forms um, to the community because we want to know what they like, what they don't like about our programs. So I just picked uh, one for basically every grade that we offer. Um, so I won't read it uh, verbatim, but just highlighting some different points. Our pre-K through grade two Tiger basketball camp, great program and coach. I've seen my daughter's confidence grow. Her, her performance has increased. 
our cheer clean, uh, clinics. My daughter had so much fun. She enjoyed learning. Give a big shout out to our coaches, Corey and Jamie, for making modifications to the camp um, in regards to accessibility and inclusivity. Our North Metro Track and Field League, which we actually had to cancel last year, that was up and running this year, which was exciting. We had a lot of student athletes that helped in that camp, so that was what they highlighted. The student helpers were really nice and helped me learn. Um, and then a high school tennis, um, which are co are, we've had uh, from the Door family for many, many years. You learn important things. Uh, every year I do this camp, I improve so much and have such a fun time with my friends. You get to go outside and get good exercise in. Um, overall, positive, positive feedback for our rec programs this summer, which is very exciting and heartening. Um, and when people return, um, that's always really exciting because then we know we have solid programming to offer for our youth. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then one thing I wanted to highlight was student-led camps. Uh, so we have a lot of recreation programs where students are assisting coaches and everything, but these three <coughs> specific camps work solely student-led um, by recent graduates and then current high school students as well. So one new one was our flag football camps led by um, 2023 graduate Cooper. Um, and then we have our Little Boots Soccer led by Noah, which has been around for the past few years. And then lastly, uh, Sandlot Baseball by Nico. He actually was an assistant a few years back when we had the program, um, but we decided to bring it back and he said, yeah, I'd love to take this on, this is great. So it's really, really cool to see that youth to youth connection, specifically in um, the area of leadership for youth. That's always a very um, important role for me is to be able to help grow them in their leadership skills. Um, and we got all positive feedback for these programs too. Of course, there's always a little nerve, it's a little nerve wracking because you don't know um, how much leadership they can offer because they're still kids themselves, but um, they've really stepped up and been able to offer some really cool uh, camps this summer. So that's an area where I hope to grow in the future too, is um, focusing more with youth meeting all of our different camps and classes too, and getting support from adults. But I want them to be the face of our programs as much as possible. Um, next slide. Um, any questions before I move on to enrichment? All right. Um, so then uh, enrichment, this is the same uh, bar graph again as before, just condensed. Um, so again, this was a very important area for me to grow, and I think we've succeeded in being able to offer a lot for our youth and our community, which is really exciting. A few new additions this summer compared to last summer is we had art camps, we had farm camps, which I'll talk a little bit about, um, and then Friday STEM camps. Generally, we've never offered Friday camps. But again, there's a lot of uh, missed opportunities for families that day who just want to have a day camp here and there. The weekdays, Monday through Thursday, get to be really hard for families with uh, work um, flexibility. But generally, a lot of people have more, a lot more flexibility on Fridays where they can drop their kid off for uh, you know five, six hours. Next slide. Um, so again, we'll list all of them, but here are the different areas of enrichment programs, everything from your art and drama camps to robotics and horse camps. So a lot of different offerings that we've been able to have this summer, which we still have a lot of opportunity to grow here, but I think it was a really good start for this summer. Next slide. Um, one fun thing I thought would be uh, to pull our top three enrichment camps. Uh, based off of the number of enrollments. One, because the first one was our Down on the Farm series, which is a family-oriented one for families of birth through grades three. We had 173 participants enrolled so far. We have a couple more this um, in August still, but this was a community partnership where we just reached out to local farms and said, hey, we would love to partner with you to offer something for our kids and our families. Uh, they they loved the idea, and so this is what we were able to offer, and it's been a huge hit. Um, and we, we have one of our ECFE teachers um, actually leading it and just being on site to support the families each day. Um, our next one is Drama Camp. Of course, this has been around for a long time. It's always one of our most popular programs. They did uh, The Little Mermaid Junior this uh, this summer, which was really, really fun. I got to go see the show and watch them perform, and that was a great time. And then our last one, Pioneer School, where we partner with the Historical Society, also has been around for quite a while, but always, always one of the favorite um, camps for everybody. Next slide. All right. And then finally, uh, well, the last program that I oversee is Tiger Club. 
So the data here is just the number of contracts that we've had um, from last year compared to this year. So our Tiger Club program during the summer is also increasing. We've gotten a little over 30 extra contracts this summer. We're housed in primary right now. And then Friday, we're moving to intermediate for the rest of the summer so they can continue doing cleaning. Our Tiger Club program during the summer is for incoming uh, pre-K through grade six. Um, and then during the school year, it's just our pre-K through grade five. And then we have our early risers program for the middle school. New this summer is our AmeriCorps members. Um, I oversee um, several members who help out in both our recreation and enrichment and Tiger Club programs. Um, and we've had AmeriCorps volunteers before in the summer programmings, but what's new there is that um, they actually were able to really just focus on just Tiger Club and then they help support Tiger Academy as well. Um, but one thing I wanted them to really focus on is giving back to the kids as much as they can by leading different presentations and doing different projects like art projects or STEM projects. Um, and then they also are helping with supplemental reading too um, to help support families in that need as well. Um, and then a fun thing is our, we're doing an end of summer party, which I'll talk about uh, shortly as well. Next slide. Um, so it's been a fun-filled summer, uh, lots of great adventures and dress-up days and everything else. We have theme weeks, we have presentations, we have field trips, we have different uh, bike outings, all of the different um, things that we can try to keep kids engaged and not um, too bored <laughs> out of their minds. Next slide. So uh, our themed weeks, uh, these are all of the ones that we had for this summer. So um, we do two weeks at a time, except for the Stars and Stripes, where we just had it during our 4th of July week. But we have a lot of different activities and projects are surrounding these, whether it's a, um, art projects or um, sidewalk talk, or maybe they're building a fort for camp or something like that. So there's just a lot of different opportunities that we try to provide um, the kids during these themed weeks. Next slide. Um, talking about the presentations and performances, we've had three big ones this uh, summer. Again, our AmeriCorps members helped present um, one thing that uh, we struggled a little bit with is um, just some bullying things, and I, I that's obviously not okay. And so I talked to our AmeriCorps members and said, hey, I would like you to step up, um, take a leadership role in providing presentations regarding acceptance, inclusion, and talking about different cultures. Um, and so they took that to heart. They loved it. And they're like, yes, we'd love to support. So we were able to have um, presentations on all of those different things, which was really cool. And I feel like that really sunk in for the kids, too, and understanding the importance of just being kind to everyone. Um, I did a presentation on Germany during our culture um, around the world themed weeks. I spent a lot of time in Germany, so I just wanted to talk to them about engineering and have them guess different inventions that came from Germany and how that helped um, um, kind of where we're at with medicine and automobiles and all that different stuff. Um, and then Skeeter the Clown came a few weeks back thanks to the Princeton Lions um, and just did a cute little presentation, so was able to bring up some of the kiddos um, to try to balance a feather on their hand and their nose, and it was a really great time. The kids absolutely loved it, and they were able to go to uh, see the circus come uh, to life as they uh, popped open the tent and all this other stuff. So that was last week, and they really loved being able to do that. They rode their bikes out, and they had a really good time. Next slide. Um, and then lastly, our field trips. So the ones that we've done so far in June and July, we went to Como, Bunker Beach, Old Log Theater, and Three Rivers. And then a new one this year that we wanted to try was Minnehaha Falls, because we had a lot of kids who'd said, I've never seen a waterfall before. So we wanted to provide them with the opportunity to see it. Granted, it wasn't the most exciting waterfall because of the drought, but it was still a waterfall. <laughs> so we were happy to have that. Um, so they have a lot of fun with these field trips. The Bunker Beach and the water ones are always the highlight of the trips for sure, but everyone's a great one. Next slide. And then our upcoming celebrations and field trips for August. Uh, we've got Daycare Day at the Fair next week, um, Cascade Bay, which is another water park, and then our end of summer party, uh, which will be our last week on the 23rd of August. And that is really just a big thank you to our families 
for um, coming in and supporting us and choosing us as their uh, child care provider. Um, so you're all more than welcome to come. That's um, noon to 4 p.m. at Intermediate. It'll be out in the field, it's really nice, but we'll have ice cream truck and pizza barns coming in. Um, so it'll be a really fun time, and I can definitely send you more information as we uh, find out, but it'd be fun for you all to come and just see what that's all about. What, what day is that again? The 23rd of August. What time did you say? So yeah. noon to 4 p.m. So I'm happy to send, I'll, I'll send out some information and invite for all of you too. So, but it'd be fun to have you there just to come check out. Um, I'm hoping to do a donation drive too for the community at their admission. So bring a food uh, food item and that'll be their admission. So to, just to give back to the community as much as possible. So, um, all right, um, next slide. I think that was the last one. Yes, so any questions at all for me? I would like to say that both my children have loved the, the junior basketball camp has Good. been like a very big, what do you mean it's over, like hit <laughs> at, at our house. So. We will have it again in the winter, fall. <laughs> and also the having the kids teaching the kids, like I just love that so much. And we have to go to the ninth grade basketball games this all last year because of the junior tiger basketball, you know, like helpers, and we'll be there again this year. So I, it does really make a difference for the kids. Yeah. And I have another volunteer for you. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> we'll touch base. <laughs> Great presentation. Looks like yeah. you're bringing everything in the right direction. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Very nice. Trying. We're trying our best. So we got a lot to go, but we're excited for the next upcoming year. So I'm busy there, working on the fall catalog right now. <laughs> was there still a wait list for the Summer Tiger Club, or is that just during the school? Uh, just during the school. Um, so we've we've come up with a plan to try to make it work for Tiger Club, and we're staying at primary for right now. We worked with Sarah um, on finding space to make it work, and then we'll reconvene as the weather gets bad, and hopefully we won't have to move to intermediate. It just it creates a lot of logistics um, and complications if staff are out sick and we need to combine rooms and doing all these mm -hmm. different things. So uh, we want to make sure we have a really solid program as we've had a lot of transitions to with staffing um, the past year for that too. But I think that at some point in time we're going to have to expand Tiger Club yep. um, into the intermediate school. The, the major barrier there <clears throat> is you know, that's an after school kind of program so you need to have a time for the kids to blow, blow off some steam and run and play and those kinds of things and um, if we move Tiger Club to the intermediate school we'll need to use the gymnasium for part of the time especially in the winter time mm -hmm. which then will impact um, lots of our rentals yeah. because we have some some major programs that are in that gymnasium space and that kind of leads it to the you know the growing issue we have with, with gym space issues in the district. Yep, and it also competes with our reckoning enrichment program. We have a lot offered after school, and we're going to have a great great partnerships, which I'm excited to um, have you all see. But that's another thing too is if we move over to intermediate, then where do we put all of these after school um, programs as well? So we we want them to complement each other, not compete against each other. So we're trying. to to figure out all those logistics too on how we can um, give kids just all the opportunities without going crazy. <laughs> yeah, one thing that, that's been really noticeable for me is the, the very active uh, advisory group that community Ed has this year. I know we have a couple board members that sit on that. Any, any thoughts from that? You had an opportunity, Melissa, to say a couple things, Don, anything from your perspective being on the board member that represents the board on the advisory group? Um, probably what I've seen this year is there's actually more community members that have stepped up to being on that board. And I think um, Brian has done some different things too with bringing policies and we're reviewing a lot of different things there. So I think they feel like they're more um, part of the group versus just meeting and kind of what does your group do or that. Mm -hmm. They're actually having some input on policies and different items that he brings forward so that's a good thing yeah i think i mean i'm super pleased with the progress that we've made and certainly we're not satisfied as we're driven to continue to get you know grow and offer more opportunities to the public i think i've mentioned this to the board in the past is you know um, the budget is under its own umbrella community ed so you know the message i've sent them is if if we grow the revenue 
then that would you know potentially offer the opportunity to have more expense expenses and we are when we compare ourselves to other like size districts we're we're pretty slim with our staff and that's that's kind of a kind of a business where you have to have people to get the programs going so you know hopefully we'll continue to grow and we'll be able to add some much needed staff to the department for sure mm -hmm. awesome. all right well thank you all very much appreciate thank the time thank you thank you, thank you. and don't think you need to